Good evening. Welcome back to Trolls Pilots uh, living room where we are uh, preparing, have prepared uh, a little bit of a show on collection today. Uh, collection, not in the way you collect cars or stamps, but in the way you collect uh, the energy of a spring by compressing it, for instance. Uh, we are going to take you through a whole bunch of photos uh, today. Uh, some photos will be showing... Uh, uh, the photos will be showing various uh, collected horses, more or less. Some with aspects that are uh, th that show just one narrow aspect of collection. Some that show things that aren't collection but might have been. Um, and we are going to try and just talk you through and and uh, give you a, a, a fairly good idea of what co collection might look like mm. in an ideal world. And no videos today. No videos today, but we will be showing videos later. And in the later videos, we will try and show you uh, things such as um, the difference between um, where the horse just sinks into his haunches and where the horse actually releases that springy power forward, but still does not um, extend completely and lose the collection. That's the that's the idea for today. Now you're talking about collection, just uh, as if everybody knows what collection is. Yeah. Shall we explain it a little first? What collection is? I uh -huh. just said uh, it's uh, like compressing a spring, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, that was <laughs> the shortest possible explanation I could Or should we I just dive make? into the photos and then? I, I was thinking it's much easier for everyone yeah. to to have an idea if we start with the photos. Yeah. So and we can um, explain it while we're going. Yes, that's the idea, right? So if uh, we bring up the first photo, as you see, this horse is uh, well. He's well. on his haunch haunches, is he? Well, he's not on anything else. So it's kind of, in the air. He's in the air. That's mm -hmm. it's like, it's like jumping. Like half the horse is jumping and the other half is uh, not. Yeah, because you know that collection is about. Uh, um, also, it, it's like compressing the, the horse so it gets shorter and more energetic, just like a spring. Yeah. But it's also like uh, transferring some of the weight from the forehand to the haunches. Yeah, that's that's sort of the idea. Yeah, so many people think that collection is the same as the levade or, you know, sitting for getting mm -hmm. the horse to sit down on his haunches and lifting up the forehand. Yeah. So, so this is uh, not a levade. Uh, the thing you can see here is that the horse, the, the rider has completely collapsed in his hips <laughs> and fallen forward. And, uh, well, I know this guy and he, uh, he, he and still I struggles with that, but not this bad. So what's going on here is the horse is just pushing off with his front legs, like booming his front legs to the ground mm -hmm. and then kicking himself into the air with his front legs, mm -hmm. which makes the rider collapse forward. Mm -hmm. Right, so he's not sinking into his haunches or stepping in underneath or any of those, those old classical ways of expressing at least parts of what collection is supposed to be. So this big fat cross on this one, that's not a collected horse. There's something else that we see that you talk about the hind legs. Yeah. They're, they're, they're yeah. Of course they're bent, but they're they're not sinking sinking in sinking down no and it's like taking up the, the weight on the musculature yes so, so uh, there's some so bend in them but they can't you can't take up you can see that it would be impossible to slowly wrench the horse around its hind legs from that position that just can't be done no his his weight is not on the forehand it's not on the high quarters it's in the air yep and quite without control yeah, it's like throwing a stone in the air and then saying well it's uh, it's got no weight <laughs> now <laughs> yeah so the haunch the front end of this horse has no weight at mm. the moment well mm. it'll come potential down. energy yeah. yeah take it on your nose and see what happens so so what we're doing now is talking about collection it's starting with a picture of showing what collection is not this isn't collection <laughs> So, right, cool. And the reason why is that we have a bunch of photos that we're going to comment and we don't know in which uh, uh, order they come. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, so we, it's, we, it's of course, we have practiced a lot, so we know exactly <laughs> the next one. Next one, please. 
Yeah, you see? And that's me and this and Dalton the the That's the, horse. the same horse, isn't it? Yeah. Is he more or less collected? He, the, you can see there obvious that it is less collected because he has one front leg on the ground. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No? Are you funny? Yeah. I'm not funny, but I was trying to be not funny with a point. Yeah, I know. But yeah, yeah we must um, we must take care so we don't confuse people too much because uh, it, sometimes um, many people of course. think that. So yeah, so but I I think we are a little tired because we had we had some uh, as you know some problems with the production and stuff. So we're we've been sitting here and um, and making jokes and stuff. So we'll try to be a little <laughs> making more serious. jokes as it were. <laughs> Yeah, but you can so see in this picture that here? the hind the hind leg, the one that's on the ground, it has it is it, it's sinking deeper through the uh, what do you call the lowermost joint, the the hock, or the stifle, the hock, the very lowermost joint. Oh yeah, the uh, <coughs> what's it called? Anyone? No. Cool no. the cool the Fetlock. The fetlock. Thank you very much. Good. <laughs> Somebody's still awake. Uh, so it's sinking through the fetlock pretty good. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you can see that it's sinking through more in the hind, hind legs than in the front legs. Yeah. And you can also see that the, the muscle on the back, like on the rump of the horse all the way down to below the knee on the back side, that musculature looks really active in this picture. Mm -hmm. And knowing this horse, he's trying to push himself forward with those all the time. Mm -hmm. And his back isn't quite up to the task. Mm -hmm. So you can see that the back is still a little bit hanging down, or I wouldn't say hanging in his case. I would say it's tense. tense yeah, very tense. He's right. very, his back muscles are really short and stiff. Tend to tense. Yeah. Yep. And he's, all right. Yeah. So, but, but what the point is, uh, what is collection? Mm -hmm. So. It, it, now you can see that there is some weight on the hindquarters. Definitely. A little more than in the front. Yes. And also in this, this is called a piaf. Uh, uh, it's uh, the, um, the front leg in the piaf is quite like... Perpendicular, perpendicular to the ground? Yes. Almost. Yep. So it's not... Often you see in the piaf that the, uh, the front leg is like... Move back, moving backwards, mm. and and sort it's of like trying to keep up some of the weight. Yeah, it is a slight bit here as well, but you can see from Not the fat looks as well that mm. is carrying quite a lot of weight on the hindquarters mm. compared and what's to the, the front. Point with, uh, uh, what's the point with? What's the point of doing the piaf? Uh, you're asking very difficult questions today. Am I? Shall I answer so why to the best of my it? abilities? It's a okay. trick. No, it uh, isn't. The piaf is like the squat for uh, um, for uh, uh, a human any, athlete. A human athlete. Thank you. That that works. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're a footballer or if you're uh, if you're a skier or a ski jumper or whatever you might be. Uh, even even a boxer. Mm. If you can do squats really well, it will aid you in almost all sorts of movements that you need to do otherwise. Mm. Tennis, whatever, it doesn't really matter. It makes the musculature in the hindquarters of the human stronger, right? And the piaf will do some of that, depending on how much weight the horse will carry on its hind legs in the piaf, mm -hmm. because that, will, that can be varied. It isn't... Uh, the piaf isn't an on-off sort of thing. It's not like when you've turned the piaf on, the horse is carrying all his weight behind. No. When you turn the piaf on, maybe the horse is on his forehand. We don't know that until we see it. Sometimes, yeah. it, sometimes the horse is carrying on the front legs. Sometimes it is uh, carrying more behind. Because it's quite easy to teach the <clears> horse <throat> to understand that it's supposed to be trotting on the spot. Yeah. So, so then you can just... You, you know, Take a bunch of uh, sugar lumps and, mm -hmm. and, and go out and give the horse a, a piece of sugar each time it tries to s trot on spot. Yep. And then he will soon fi figure out how that that is what you want him to do. Yep. But then he will quite likely uh, start trotting on the forehand. Yeah, depending on how good you are with your rewards and all that sort of stuff, yeah. of course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so the, but the point is to, to 
make the horse more supple. Yep. Uh, balanced. More balanced, yep. stronger in the hindquarters, yep. uh, and more agile. Yes, like m able to to shift its weight. And, and it, what happens is like that, that when he takes more more weight on the hindquarters, but executes this in a very small movement, what happens then is that the horse practices doing different movements with a lot of weight bearing on the hindquarters. Mm -hmm. So it makes him more agile, of course, like you said, able to change the movement pattern without tensing up mm -hmm. that's the idea and it's easier to understand if you if you for instance if the, if this horse uh, if you would like to turn him quickly you set put him down on his haunches and then you just change the direction like mm -hmm. that yep so it's a very good thing to to uh to train to train for show jumpers and everyone Yep. To, to be able to, to do fa fast changes. I did, uh, I did a bit of uh, payoff training with some race trotters as well, and they did really well because of it. True. So, mm -hmm. next, please. That's kind of snowy. Yeah, and that is Pele. That will be me and Aris. Yeah. So it's the same, it's a payoff. Mm -hmm. And then what you can see is, we, we were talking about um, parallelity in one earlier stream. And then we were looking at how the hind ca cannon and the lower arm, the forearm on the on the, uh, on, the front on, leg. on the front leg. The, it's difficult to remember where that is, but it's from the front knee to the elbow. Those parts of the horse should always be parallel, like the diagonal uh, legs. So you can see here that the, the artist is lifting his hind leg as much as the the diagonal front leg is, leg is lifted yep and you can see um, often you see that uh, horses are lifting the front leg more than the hind leg is lifted and then the back is not uh, sort of connecting the horse mm -hmm. and then th that is a very important thing to to consider when you're training the PR for training collection because you need to continue uh, like um, keeping up that diagonality, yeah, yeah, because uh, or else you will lose all the good stuff that you've do you've done in the basic um, uh, basic job, yeah, and that is why we we'll, we have been talking so much about, about the all the basics. Yeah, so we n must not forget that now when we started to, to talk about collection. Yeah, so we can see here that this horse is also carrying quite a lot of weight behind. You can see on the fetlock that it's uh, pushing through pretty well behind and not as much in front. Mm -hmm. uh, you can see the nose is uh, just barely in front of the vertical uh, and except maybe his uh, except his, uh, his stallion's crest, yeah. I'd say the head is in the right position. It might be just barely too low mm -hmm. but the back is still not lifting properly. Mm -hmm. So even if he's carrying behind, the back is too tense in this particular image. So here it would not be so easy to just go forward in a nice uh, passage, for instance. It, uh, maybe you could manage the passage, but definitely not straight into a, a, like a medium or extended trot, for yeah. sure. Depend yeah, the passage is possible because you can do it on strength alone. Yeah, and you can trick train it to just lift the lift, <laughs> lift a little yeah. bit further. Mm -hmm. That is possible, but it it would it the passage wouldn't be of any better quality than the no. piaf. Mm -hmm. And this piaf still well, it renders the trot better, but it's very True. difficult to do the trot straight from this piaf. Mm -hmm. It will tend to rush after a little while mm -hmm. because of that because tenseness the back in the is back. Not there. Yeah. I know this now. Mm -hmm. Next, please. It's exciting to see what comes. Yeah. All right, that's not a piaf. No, it's a trot. It's a young horse. Yep, four-year-old. Um, I think. Yeah, it's a Lusitano. Um, and you haven't, uh, you hadn't been rid, rid, you hadn't ridden that horse many times no. when that happened. I can still remember this day. Uh, my heart actually moved from down in the chest region to quite up underneath the head, <laughs> I'd say. Maybe into the head even. 
he was a uh, he's guy. a fiery guy. He's a feisty guy. You can see it, but still the the parallelity. Yeah, that was the reason why I wanted to bring that uh, that uh, picture into this uh, collection thingy because this is not collection; it's balance. But it's important to talk about uh, impulsion. You could say that in this picture, there is a you could. I think you could say there's a bit of uh, collection in it because the hind leg is definitely pushing off as hard as the front leg, maybe more. Yeah, and that is because uh, the horse was really fiery and, and you got this. Uh, some, I was some... given this. I was, this, yes. is not, this isn't something I rode in there. I was given this yeah. and somebody with a, <laughs> with a I was there and phone <laughs> was yeah. able to catch yeah. the photo. But you, see, you also see that the, the hind leg that is grounded isn't far behind the butt of the horse. No, that is an important point. Talk about that. Uh, well, I just did. So <laughs> when... <laughs> Imagine the horse moving forward with the hind leg lagging far behind while still on the ground. Mm -hmm. In that position, it will be almost impossible to have any lifting force on the front leg. So what you can see is that the, the, um, the off hind, the left hind in this uh, particular image, is still bent in the knee and the mm -hmm. hock and the fetlock, mm -hmm. while the, the leg is quite under the horse so because of the position of the knee it is still possible to lift from that position to lift the front end of the horse not only the hind end mm -hmm. uh, and when you do that moving forward that becomes impulsion or yes. that is impulsion because but then it's almost it's, you can then say that the collection is a part of the impulsion or the impulsion is part of the collection yes because uh, it's many people have difficulties understanding how collection comes into a trot that goes forward. Mm -hmm. Because it's easy to understand the levade or the piaf and, and to see or perhaps understand that that the the weight is transferred from the the, the forehand to the hindquarters. Yeah, like we but saw in the first photo with the whole horse in the yeah in the yeah. Air. yeah. It's but sort of here you can think. say yeah. you can see that the horse is going forwards, but for each step, as we have been talking about many times, that the la the back is lifting the forehand up mm -hmm. for each each uh, step. And that's the idea of riding is uh, the dressage riding is that you move weight from the front end to the hindquarters because the horse tends to be on the forehand. Mm -hmm. Also important now that this whole uh, the training scale, uh, it's sort of um, parted into six different ideas, right? But it isn't really. That is just a tool for understanding. So remember that it's just a tool for understanding how you do things or understanding what you are missing in order to complete the picture. This particular photo isn't too far away from having all, all the elements in one picture. Mm -hmm. uh, you can't see here if the horse is straight. He isn't. Uh, and you might also say that he's dropping his head a little bit too much. It isn't perfection in any way, but there is definitely energy, impulsion, mm. a bit of collection. Um, uh, he's fairly supple. Uh, everything is fairly good in this photo. Mm -hmm. Rhythm is good. Yeah, but uh, we have to say that this is a young horse, so you shouldn't ride like that you know, on a young horse all the time. No, no, no. It was just a moment that we just got there, but because he... he I wasn't able to get off until a while after he didn't let me, <laughs> so... Yeah. Next so, yeah, photo, next please. Photo. Here we go. All right, this is, yeah. uh, this is a weird picture because this is half of a series of photos that where I was trying to ride a falcade, uh, which is sort of a... Uh, it's a very expressive way of doing a canter-halt transition. Uh, so I tried here to really bring the hindquarters in under from the canter and then have the horse lift himself high up and then strike down like, like the falcon mm -hmm. strikes his prey with his hind, hindquarters first and then comes down on top and of it. And you did so. I managed uh, in this photo to do that and you can see that the musculature in the hindquarters is really, really engaged. 
but it is also possible to see fun things like the horse isn't straight. You can see that he's carrying more on the near hind than on the off hind. Typical. The right hind doesn't want to carry all that. Mm. With all that power, he doesn't want to. But again, we have this he, the front end is coming down. You can see that he can't support himself in this position. If you look at it is, and you think, can he stand like that forever? Well, in the photo I can. But that's because it's a still. <laughs> uh, in a video, I would, the front end would be coming down. Because in order to keep himself upright like this, he would have to have his front end higher in the air or the hind end further under. Or at back, least one or of those things. More up. Well, and yes, will and see that. you will also have the hindquarters more under in that yeah. particular case. Because, and, and this was, when you did this, it was not your, uh, your objective with the thing to be standing there. You were doing this falcat. Yeah. So you were actually, he is, now he's on his way to just go down again, yep. like with power. Yep. But it's, it's nice to see the bent knees or the stifles mm -hmm. and the, the pelvis is tucked under yeah. uh, and the, the hocks are bent and he's almost sitting on his fet fetlocks. Yeah, and you can see the musculature in the hindquarters is just popping. So it's easy to see that he really takes weight on his hind, hind legs. Yeah, it yeah. was really difficult too because you can't just pull the horse up there. That's impossible with mm -hmm. this one. So, cool. Next one, please. I'm just having fun looking at these pictures today. <laughs> and this is the same horse that they'll say. The youngster again. Yeah. And this yeah. is more, um, it, it's more to, to, to illustrate the same thing actually, that the, the energy that needs to come from behind and also the parallelity. And mm -hmm. uh, you can see that the hind leg is actually as active as the front leg. This is something that you don't see that often. Yeah. Uh, things that are better in this photo, the back is way more engaged. Mm -hmm. It's much more up through the withers. Uh, he isn't as deep in front. He's, I'm not saying perfect, but he's not as deep in front. You can see the bend in all the joints in the, in the leg that's in the air. This is an important point. Uh, the leg that is in the air isn't doing work. Just so you guys... Uh, are, are with me on this one. The, it's nice to see that the that all the joints in the hind leg is are bent and are working correctly and that you can see the parallelity. But that's not the leg that's doing work at the moment. It's the leg that's on the ground that's doing work. It's quite easy to test this. You can stand up in your own living room or whatever, wherever you are uh, and then lift one leg up and bend the other one and see what happens. See which one is tired first. <laughs> Just, it's an easy, very easy thing to do. Try it, or if you don't have, you don't have to try it if you have imagination, so, or even memory. <laughs> so yeah. And you can see still that this hindquarters, a lot of the pelvis is yeah. tucked under. Yeah. Uh, the knee is, uh, or the stifle is under the belly, mm -hmm. and also what you talked about the the hind legs. Yeah. They don't stick out like, like they don't. No. They're not behind the body. No. And Even the, the one that is really kicking off there yeah. is, is not... And it's pushing off really hard and will propel the whole horse up and forward. And you can yes. see it from the angles. Mm -hmm. If you can't see it, see it back one more time later on. Right, next picture. Hey, hey. what's this kind of? What kind this of... This is Thea and Prumik. In an exercise of some sort. Yeah, it's... It's some, some people call it this the school halt, yeah. and they train it, and we don't train the school, train the horses to do the school, school halt, 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 but when we collect them, they sometimes do this. Yeah. All right, so with this horse, as well as, uh, as um, uh, the red one, you can see that the off hind isn't carrying as much weight as the near hind. Mm -hmm. That is so typical. Most horses right. are like that. Yeah. For some reason, um, uh, I believe that uh, the gene for being left or right-handed has been found in people. Yeah, uh, and we we people assume that that's the the same idea with horses that they're just born that way, with mm -hmm. one favoring one hind 
leg to do one thing and another to do the other thing. It's like crabs, you know, they have one or hummus. Or the, what, what, yeah. what is it called? The lobsters. Leg? Lobsters, they have one big crushing claw and one nice little yeah. snitching claw, mm. right? So this is Prumik trying to carry weight from behind. He manages on one hind especially, and then he lifts the lifts one front leg because there's so much power and all that is going forward through him. He's trying to do this. Uh, the rider here, you can see, is managing to sit pretty upright. Hasn't been tucked forward like uh, like in the first picture with me. Mm -hmm. You saw I was falling forward like that. Mm -hmm. But that's not happening here. That's because the horse is sinking into his haunches. Mm -hmm. And the next step would be the horse stepping forward yeah. into the haunches, which mm -hmm. is even more difficult. And it's often difficult to do that from this position. Yep. Because he has been sinking backwards instead yep. of uh, instead of uh, like uh, moving his hind legs forwards. It's really, really difficult. But it's a really good way to start um, making the horse understand or feel that he can carry from behind. Yeah. So and, and the horse will sometimes choose to do it themselves. Mm -hmm. But you can also ride the horse into this. Mm. And there's nothing wrong with doing any of those things. And you can see that the the weight is actually lifting off the front the front leg that is at the ground. Yeah, it's the, the the heel is just barely touching. Mm. So he's carrying a lot of weight on that left hind. Strong promic, <laughs> one legged, <laughs> yeah. one legged horse. Very very good. <laughs> All right, um, I think we're gonna move on. Still, we've got a lot of photos for you guys, so we're trying to spend not a quarter of an hour on each because that'll be a very long. I think that's the same that we've we uh, We saw this one already, mm. so let's move. There we go, that's some sort of a passage, I guess. Yeah, it's. Uh, I think that's one of the first times you did the passage with this horse. Yeah. Ah, you can st your sentence could have stopped earlier. It's one of the first times I did the passage. Ah, yeah. Not the first, but one of the first. Mm -hmm. The first time I did that, I was in Portugal, I believe. So... You can see the horse, is, the, the horse, their rider is sitting a little bit uh, with his legs too much forward and stuff like that. You might have seen this rider do that before. Uh, but anyway, uh, you can see the horse is forcefully pushing off with his hind leg. And still the parallelity is pretty good. Quite typical for me is that when I really put energy into it, the horse tends to lift his hind legs more than the front legs, which mm. is sort of backwards. Mm. Compared to most people. That's because you're very good at controlling the high legs, but you have been not so good at uh, letting the energy through the back. Yeah, I was but unable you, to. Yeah. But, but I'm, I'm getting there. Yeah. And this, this photo shows, shows some promise in that, in that regard. Uh, you see the hindquarters is really underneath. You can see here that we were talking about in the trot images with the younger horse, that the hind leg wasn't sticking out. Mm. Look at this one. Mm -hmm. It's underneath. There's no part of that leg that's behind its the horse's butt, I believe. Mm -hmm. And the horse is like, the passage is a very, uh, like, a, um, sort of, a, not a hovering trot, but it's a trot with a lot of cadence, like... Uh, it's a piaf moving forwards, yeah, the, the old guys yeah. would say, and they would also say that the piaf should be a passage in place. Mm. Uh, I think it's from Italian, spasaggio, or mm. something like that. I don't it's kill very, me. Don't kill me for the way I pronounce trot. that. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's the way you walk through the park on a Sunday, <laughs> when you're very well dressed. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Mm -hmm. And you can do the PR uh, or the passage just by lifting the legs uh, very high. Yeah, it's described as uh, the grand but passage in some uh, by some writers. Mm -hmm. uh, when the horse is really hollow in the back and the hindquarters are falling behind. Mm -hmm. uh, in this and the du passage. And the du passage is, is when the, the horse is really, passage, co yeah. really collected underneath and keeps his hindquarters with him. Mm -hmm. As you see, I get the hindquarters with him, but the back isn't really stepping in. You can, al you can also see that I'm sitting too much back with my weight, legs too far forward, so they push the back away. Yeah. All of these things are stuff that contribute to uh, me not being able yet in this photo at least and in all the other photos you've seen so far mm -hmm. uh, of letting the horse through the through the back properly mm -hmm. 
but we'll get uh, we'll get back to that as well later on. Mm -hmm. We'll talk more about back, I promise. Right, more collection next. That's the Piaf. That's the Piaf. We still got that parallelity. Mm -hmm. The horse looks slightly longer in this one, mm -hmm. but he's still lifting his back better. He's tenser. It's more difficult to see also from from this angle. Uh, uh, yeah, I've still got my uh, my legs forward in in the same manner, but you can see that it's a the horse is a little bit flatter from the saddle backwards. Yeah, mm -hmm. and the, and he's sitting down really deep. You can see yeah, that the the is. off hind, the one that that's grounded, is really bent in the. And it's quite a bit hop. of energy as well. There's a lot of energy in this mm -hmm. photo. Still a little bit too tense, carrying all the weight behind though. Mm -hmm. There's the, that front leg is hardly touching. Mm -hmm. Yep. I'm pretty yeah. happy with this. Not too bad, but you can see that there's too much tens tension. The horse is swishing his tail and stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's too much tension. And we know because at that, be that time. At that time, he was quite tense in his back. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Next image. Photo. Picture. Thing. <laughs> All right. So this is Levad then. Yeah, it's starting to. <laughs> it's getting closer. Yeah, but he's still your, your, your um, like point of what's it called center of gravity. Yeah. Is, be, is in front of the hind legs or yes. the hind feet. So yeah. it, he will fall down. Yes. But, it's, but uh, it's, we can talk about it, the hind legs. The hind legs here, you can see the musculature is just popping out. Mm -hmm. He's really carrying a lot of weight. See how far down his tail is. Yeah. If you relax the tail, if it wasn't swinging like that, it might be touching the ground. Mm -hmm. So he's really sitting down behind. The, the, the furthest, you can see that, you can see, I believe, that the, the femur from the knee to the, to the hip is more or less parallel to the ground. Yeah. Not quite, but Pretty close. Close to. And also you can see that, yeah, what's it called, uh, the, uh, well, the lumbosacral joint, you mm -hmm. know, the joint between the, the back be behind the saddle mm -hmm. and the pelvis, or not the pelvis, but the sacrum, you know, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. the croup. Yeah. It's like, and then it, it, there is a very, it, it's very important that that joint is a little flexible yeah. and then there is a flexion there. So the horse is able to sort sit down with his tail down and, and his uh, his croup tucked well croup under tucked him. under like that. that because he, he needs right. to get his his stifles, his knees under his belly mm -hmm. in order to to be able to carry. And and we see that here that the, his back is not so much lifted. We have another picture where the back is more up. We, yeah, I yeah. think we're going to sort of show that as well. But you mm -hmm. can see here also, I'm still blocking a little bit in the hips and tilting a little bit forward because mm -hmm. he's pushing off a little bit too hard with the front legs. Mm. And he's going to fall back down. Yep. All right. Next picture. There. That's rounder. Now he's trying to, to lift his back. He gets a little behind the vertical with his nose because it, it, this is difficult and he... he and I'm still not able to really release him through the through my hips as well as I should be. Uh, difference here is that, depending a little bit on the angle, it looks like the knees aren't or the the femurs aren't quite as parallel to the ground. It looks like they might be slightly less parallel. Mm. But you can see also that the the next part of the horse is maybe better engaged, like the the hip or the. Uh, what do you call it? This. The sacrum or the croup? The croup is better mm -hmm. engaged and the back is way better. Mm -hmm. So in the other one, the back was dropping quite obviously and in this one, it isn't. So in that, the other one, he was forced to tuck his uh, hind, hind legs much more under because the back was not engaged. Yeah, so not so forced by anyone, but because the back is tense, mm -hmm. he has to carry he has to bring the hind legs more underneath in order to get yeah. the right lift so, through his... And what is interesting about studying these sort of, not Levad, but trying to, to get into the Levad pictures, 
is that you can study how the back and the hindquarters and the withers and stuff and the neck are sort of correlated, how they work together mm -hmm. in lifting. And it's the same thing that is happening in each stride when the horse is cantering or trotting, but then it's not so easy to study because it's so quick. Yeah. Another thing in this one is you can see that both the hind legs are pretty well engaged. Yeah. So then you have got a bit the straighter. straightness. A bit yeah. straighter in this one. So we, we're going to talk about straightness later as well, but mm -hmm. uh, it, it, now we got from, we had a lot of things about rhythm yep. for like four streams. Now we go to the opposite side of the training scale and talking about collection. Because we think that it might be a little more interesting and exciting to, to look at... Go back uh, and forth a bit. Yes, because if we go like meticulously from one, then it's step two that is looseness and then step three that Boring. is contact. I'm you might already. get bored. Yeah, he's bored already. Yeah, but if you see what is in the other end and then we go back to see how can we get that straightness. An interesting thing here that I want to want to highlight. Uh, in this one, you can see if you look at my leg in this uh, photo, look at my foot, you can see that my foot is gripping around the stirrup. Mm -hmm. See, my toes are sort of coming down. Yeah, and that is because my the back side of my musculature my butt and my hamstrings, hamstrings. and my calves mm -hmm. are better engaged in this one than in the other one. Mm -hmm. So I'm much better at pulling my leg back and, and trying to open my hip. I'm not falling forward that much in this one. And you can see that the sort of the angles are straighter. Mm -hmm. Not straight yet, but straighter. So you're engaging your... your my top, top line. line. <laughs> my top line is better engaged and therefore the horse's top line is better engaged. Yeah. There, there's no two ways about that. No. Interesting. It also works the other way around, of course. Yeah. So if you try things that are difficult with a horse, for a horse, and he can't keep his top line engaged, it'll be almost impossible for you to do the same. Mm -hmm. so I'm, not, I'm not saying it, it can't be done, but it's much more difficult. Yeah. And sometimes when the horse is engaging, engaging his uh, abs muscles mm -hmm. you suddenly feel that your abs muscles are turning like yeah. on yeah <laughs> because wow what yeah, happened the, ho the horse because sort the of horse grabs moved. your abs and yeah. he's like <laughs> i'm do. gonna hang on you now yeah they do that's kind of funny mm -hmm. next one please nice t-shirt all right what's this then it's like then you can see that the impulsion yes you see that because the this horse, is horse is moving forward. He will be moving forward for sure. He's pushing really hard. You can see it in the musculature. Even more outspoken the musculature in the, in the croup area here than in the last one. Uh, it's not as straight. No. Uh, but he's pushing off powerfully with his whole top line. You can see my leg is even further back. We're still with that gripping around the stirrup feeling in the foot so I got my my hindquarters <laughs> engaged as well mm -hmm. and the horse is going to move forward so here you don't get the sense that he is falling down because that that would be very strange if he fell down on his front legs in this one that would look really no, this weird. This is a horse with a mission. This this guy is moving somewhere yeah so and you can see that the guy on top is uh, expecting it. Should yeah. we call it that? Mm -hmm. He's tense. So because the whole point of collecting the horse is not to they sit there and doing tricks. No, it's like moving the and getting the energy somewhere. Get somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Did you start riding because you love sitting around? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> it's a thing I've asked some of my students sometimes. But we want to to be able to to express all that power mm -hmm. with some Wind some modicum of control would yeah. be brilliant yeah. if we could do that. So this horse is moving forward powerfully, but collected. Right, next one, please. Is there more? I can't remember which was the last one. All right, that's a different one again. That is a sort of a rare again. Can yes. we talk more about the difference between collecting and rearing? Yeah, it's like, there's a saying, I've heard this said that uh, all horses can jump 120 centimeters. Mm -hmm. Even and the they cow do that. can help them they just, jump a meter. Yeah, they come just they come running, they set the front legs down, and then 
the the speed of the horse will force the horse like pole vaulting over yeah. with the front they, they end. They do this. Yeah. yeah. So because they put the left front legs forward and come over that with power or mm. speed from behind, they get thrown in the air. Mm. Like if you take a pole, run along, put it on the ground, and you'll get catapulted into the air mm. or break the pole, depending on your build. <laughs> Uh, the same could be said about jousters, uh, when they ride around with a, with a lance the first time they've ever tried this sort of stuff, and then they hit the ground with that thing. Ouch. You can set a new world record in pole vaulting, right there. <laughs> uh, it, won't, it, won't, uh, it won't be um, an official record, I believe, but anyway. So this horse that you can see in the picture is obviously sort of raring. So we're not... You can see that he can't keep this pose. That's that's a thing. If the horse can't keep the pose, it's rare. Yeah, is it? Yes. If you're doing a tad a tad, is uh, it rare? Well, he can keep the pose. I'm not saying that... He's, he's, then he's going I'm, I'm, up I'm and down. I'm not talking like about a terre, terre I'm talking about the difference between a levade passade and rearing. That's the yeah. objective here. Mm -hmm. The terre, terre is, by definition, a half air. Yeah. So it's not supposed to be able to keep 100%. Mm -hmm. It's half air. It's a, a half high school. Mm-hmm. So it's not an air above the ground, it's but a half-high yeah. school, that's mm -hmm. what they call it. So it's on its way to become, or it's you're not using all the power at once. Mm -hmm. All right. The terre, terre can be defined differently in different spots and stuff, so that's kind of hard to get into. But you can see in this here photo that the horse won't be able to keep this exact position. No, that's true. He will drop back down with his front legs, right? And it's, it's still powerful. Straight. And it's not straight. It's and not it's straight. A, it's a, it, but it's spectacul spectacular. Yeah, definitely. It's really... And it's got, it's got good elements in it. If we, if we start looking, I'm not saying this is in any way, shape or form, a levade or a passade. Nowhere near. But can you see that the knees are sort of out? Yeah, that's a good point. That's an interesting thing. That happens to us people as well. Mm -hmm. If you are good at squatting with your knees out, mostly then you will be fairly good at running. Mm. Fast. Mm. And that is something that we should study when we, if we go back and look at the PF pictures again mm -hmm. later. You can imagine if, if the knees come narrow together, there won't be room for them. No. They'll be stuck in under the belly. Mm. They can't do that, so they have to go out a little bit, like they have done here. And many horses that are not that athletic, they walk with the hocks out. Yes. And the knees in. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then they often walk like this as well. Yeah, you can see that. Just as the, the hoof touches down, you will see the, the knee fall inside in and the hock come a little bit And that out. was something that we were practicing when we were watching, I think that was the last stream, with uh, Thea and Trumik, where we, where we were studying him from behind. Mm -hmm. And then you could see that in the beginning, the, the hind legs were, were wobbling like this. Yep. And then when he was starting to become more uh, straight and, and more with more pul impulsion, mm -hmm. the hind legs were starting to work a little more correctly. So now more we're talking about, we're, we're going from the, the basic stuff. Yep to the collection stuff, but mm -hmm. then we see why this basic stuff is so important. Mm -hmm. They are parts of what we're trying to do. Yeah. Are there more photos? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, this is uh, like uh, two thirds of a standing caprile. Yeah. <laughs> or some such. I think it was fun to, to, to put that in as well. Yeah. Because that, that is something that we, or because you're doing like combat riding. Uh, that's some, something I do, yeah, and have done yeah. quite a lot. And that is, this is a, an old uh, uh, exercise for, that was thought at least to be used in combat riding. Yeah. 
And it, it, in order to do this, you need to be able to collect the horse. To some, you, you either have to uh, be able to collect the horse or you run risk of the horse uh, kicking people <laughs> or other horses at random yeah, yeah. times. So you're not but, training but, the horse to kick, are no. you? Uh, no, but if I, what I do to do this uh, particular exercise, uh, the, the standing capriole, if I want to do that, I collect the horse and straighten him from the canter. So the canter goes from being like slant Mm -hmm. to being more or less parallel. So the, the hind legs move as one unit and mm -hmm. the front legs as another unit. So we, we get close to something that, uh, like the terre terre, mm -hmm. which means ground to ground or earth mm -hmm. to earth. Mm -hmm. So the front legs on the earth, hind legs on the earth. Mm -hmm. So And then when the horse is on his front legs, I tap the horse on the rump and he'll kick out sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, and there, there's a billion different things that you can look at in this. You can look at where does the most, most of the kick come from? You can see that it's actually a fairly bent knee here as well. Mm -hmm. That's weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And he hasn't been able to really bring his croup up a bit, but it's still not flat. Isn't that interesting? Because and that is very, you know, I'm talking about the back all the time. And uh, when the horse does this, instead of, kicking like straight out with the hind legs it means that he is able to keep his back at, le at least a little the integrity of his back is still there yep and and, uh, uh, and with, uh, when uh, you yeah sorry yeah when you look at old pictures mm -hmm. illustrations yeah the good ones are always keeping that bend in the stifle the yep. knee um <clears throat> and a thing you can uh, you can think about is um this exercise is very similar to the exercise for people called the reverse hyper True, and the reverse hyper is a—it's a hallmark in some areas of muscle training. It's a hallmark of health for the back. You can strengthen your back and your abs at the same time with this exercise, and also activate your psoas in a way that's unheard of uh, for in many many diff different exercises. Um, this one won't be as much of that because it's not bringing the hand legs forward. But you can see from the execution of this one, mm -hmm. you can see that, like you said, there's integrity in the, in in the, back the, the, torso. the, the support musculature around the back. Mm. And that's, um, yeah, that's nice. It's a fun thing, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Can we go all the way back to the first one? Is that possible, please? I think this is the last one, isn't it? so that's not collection then it's the opposite of the of the, of the standing yes, kind of capriole just a backwards standing yeah. capriole next engaged behind still dropped back next still dropped back even more engaged behind mm -hmm. next moving forward with impulsion mm -hmm. and still keeping that parallelity that you have been talking about mm -hmm. Next, coming down from the canter, doing a full card. Yeah, and the, here you can see the, the knees or the stifles out, outwards. Stifles out, very Ooh. good. Yeah, next. Here too, you can see the knee coming out because there's no yeah. room for, the, for it any yeah, other yeah. place, right? You can't, you can't move the hind, hind leg under without with the, 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 with the knee it. under the belly. No, that's no. especially not the stallions. Next. <laughs> Here you can see the stifles out, knees out. It's very. Uh, you can see the the near knee is out, but the off knee, I'm not so sure actually. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess you're, you you it looks to me as right. if the the hocks are subtly further away from each other than uh, than you would want to. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. But still, really good. You see, this is one of a good good exercise for starting to think about collection. Work it from, for instance, if you want to start this, you can back up and move forward and do that several times. And then you find a point where the horse moves from backwards to forwards and you balance in there. Mm -hmm. I think the Germans are calling this a schaukeln or something. Schaukeln, yeah. Yeah. yes. Like it's the, like, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's like a, like a, uh, like an old, like a chair for uh, for uh, grandparents. Yeah. 
rocking chair. A rocking chair, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I'm sorry about the English today. It's great, isn't it? Next. Uh, passage. So, sort of a mix between the Piaf and that young horse moving forward with impulsion. Mm -hmm. uh, if you get this right, you get maximum impulsion and maximum collection at the same time. That's the, the yep. whole that is, aim of it. Yeah. Uh, Garnier writes really well about the Passage, says, well, This is the first exercise where you need precision. <laughs> he should be shot, obviously, <laughs> and shot again if he survives. But it is true. Oh, he's dead. But it's also very, very true. Um, and uh, if you can, if you can get this right, then do all the sideways exercises, like the, like the shoulder in and haunches in and all sorts of stuff like that, at the passage. Or, or not. Good luck with that. Next. <laughs> So, a much more collected piaf, but here with too much tension throughout the horse. And you can see the swishing of the tail, and you can see uh, the very high lifted uh, legs all over the place. It's a, a little bit too much tension. I wouldn't say it's bad. I'm pretty proud of it, but it's too much tension. Next. So, sort of levade, the, the back part of the horse is sort of at a levade, and the front p part of the horse is at, uh, at some sort of, uh, I don't want to do this, rare. <laughs> I don't want, I want to be still be tense in my back. Yeah. Yeah. And like you see, the, the, my legs are sort of, my upper body is tilting forward more. My legs aren't as keeping back as tense. So your top line is not engaged. In not the as same much, or I way. don't get that response from the horse. That's really hard to tell, right? Sometimes okay. it can be that I'm trying as much as in the other picture, but the horse didn't respond as well in this picture that it, as yeah. it did and in the other, might... and it looks different because of that. Yeah, and it might be in, uh, on your way down. I can't remember. Mm -hmm. I can't. I I... Did I hear the click? No. Mm -hmm. Next. So rounder. Yeah. So this, this is this is the first picture I have of myself that looks more or less like a good levade. There's obviously still things wrong here, mm -hmm. but it it felt also like a levade. You can see the horse looks like he's like he's, it looks like a pony. Yeah, it's, it's a really large small. horse. It's really big. Uh, yeah. <laughs> looks really small. Funny. But it's uh, this is also showing very well, I think, in a slow motion or. In, uh, yeah, in a still, in a still, still yeah. picture. How the back needs to carry, like how the back needs to lift up mm -hmm. to be able to lift the front uh, in the, in a more controlled way. Yeah. When you're also when you're doing the canter and we're doing the ordinary trot, the working trot. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Uh, I think we should end on this one. Yep. This is sort of uh, the best I had to offer last summer or whenever this was. Mm-hmm. Awesome. So, and we're, we're, I think perhaps next time we're trying to give you some videos as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, talking about more about collection. Yep. But we thought that um, giving you sort of a theoretical uh, idea of what we think about collection and what to look for, um, then it's easier to, to study the um, live video thingies. Yep. Mm. We'll try and show... Uh, Younger horses and older horses in that one as well. Mm -hmm. Both in hand and ridden. Yeah. Right. So next episode is going to be either 22nd of December, depending on uh, how we're, how well, how fast we can work, I think, <laughs> <laughs> I think is the truth here. Uh, or it might be after the new year. Um, we might stick in some short little things like iPhone made things. Uh, some during the, the um, uh, holi Christmas the holidays mm. as well. Uh, we always, of course, want you to like us on Facebook. We want you to share suggestions and stuff. I want to know more about this. You have to ask that so that we can see that there's someone there actually wanting to see that. Um, questions? Ha, that was clear. <laughs> <laughs> so, with that, Thanks All that remains is, thanks for watching, yeah, mm -hmm. and uh, good night. Sleep tight. <laughs>